Hey guys, so continuing my series on my favorite water cooling cases, we're going to talk about a mini ITX system. Now, this one is going to be very, very unique, and it's the Silverstone LD03. So let's talk about it. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology here. So let's talk about the Silverstone LD03. I've done a few videos on this, and in today's video, I'm gonna talk about why it's one of my favorite water cooling cases. We're gonna talk about the aesthetics, the performance, and then other build notes that I think are important as I did in the other cases in the series. Now, first, let's talk about the aesthetics. This is a mini ITX system, and while it's not the smallest one, it definitely has an extremely unique unique design. You have the glass on all sides, so basically you can see your system from the side panels or from the front, tempered glass all around. It looks absolutely stunning when you have your RGB lights or whatever's inside. Um, the glass panel is a little bit darker, so you definitely want to have some type of RGB light or something inside, especially if you have water cooling. Um, and at first, when I did a water cooling build in this case, I really had to think to make sure that I route everything appropriately, because anytime you're dealing with a mini ITX case, you really don't have the same flexibility as you would to do it in a larger case. For example, you can't use the same type of radiators often. You can't use the same type of pump and reservoirs. You often have to find smaller and more compact versions. But thankfully, this case does have a pretty decent amount of room as well tackled in the performance section of the video. But in terms of the aesthetics, it seems like a lot of mini ITX systems are really hidden. Your components don't get to be displayed because generally you're going to be the only one seeing it. But in this case, as I said, with the tempered glass all the way around, it's a beautiful case to display your build so you can really exquisitely see everything that you did and the possibilities for doing a really serious custom mod or even a very serious custom water cooling in here. Um, you can do so many different things. You can do like a custom distribution plate that takes up one side. Um, you can do a lot of very creative things when you have to sort of work with a little bit of a smaller space but at the same time you do have a lot of visibility into the interior of the case um, so you do have a lot of options. So now let's talk about the performance of this case. And when we talk about performance in terms of a water cooling case, basically we're talking about the airflow and the radiator space. Now, in this case, I was able to do 120 millimeter radiator on the bottom as well as the top. And of course, you can go fairly thick with these radiators, even if you have your fans on there. Um, you're really not gonna be able to fit a 240 millimeter radiator here, unless you do some type of special modification, maybe you have it upright on the side of the case but in general I found that having these two radiators 120 on the bottom and top as long as I'm not going too crazy with the overclock was more than sufficient to cool the CPU as well as a water cooled GPU of course if you have a big system with 360 millimeter radiators or 480 millimeter radiators you're gonna get quieter and faster performance but in general, I thought that the airflow performance of this case was really good. You have open on the bottom where the air comes up and you have heat rising from the bottom all the way to the top. In fact, I believe that this case works even better as a water-cooled case because if your GPU is water-cooled, you don't have to worry about those fans being up against the glass. I know Silverstone have a new case coming out with a perforated side so you can get more airflow in your air-cooled GPU. But in terms of water cooling, all you really need is that access to air from the bottom going all the way to the top exhaust and that way you're gonna have perfect airflow and I thought it was more than adequate especially considering the size of the case. Of course, in a mini ITX case, if you have less radiators, often you're gonna have to run your fans a little bit louder. And as long as you have your fans hooked up to a PWM curve, I think you should be fine. Um, noise was very, very acceptable. When the glass is on, it's actually fairly well insulated. So as long as your fans are on a pretty good curve, I think you'll be okay. Obviously, if you run them at 100%, you're gonna hear them as you will in any case. But here, I think you'll have the ability with PWM to sort of ramp your fans up as performance dictates it as you need it. And if you build it sort of how I did with the radiator on the bottom and top, I was able to cap the fan noise at a very acceptable level in terms of the performance that I was getting on both the CPU and the GPU. Now, when we come to a water cooling case, a lot of times the CPU, yeah, it's gonna be lower in temperature, but it's not our primary focus. 
definitely the GPU often is going to be the superstar of a water cooling build because you can get temperatures from like 84 C if it's air cooled all the way down to like somewhere in the 40s and 50 C. So you could see literally like a 50% drop in your temperatures. So water cooling your GPU has a tremendous effect on its temperature. Even in a small case like this, you're going to be getting a lot better temperatures than you would if the GPU remained air cooled. And finally, a couple of interesting build notes. I love the way that these side panels just snap in place. Aside from the fact that it's all tempered glass and you get to see in, everything feels very high quality. The panels snap really easily. You just pull the front panel off and then you have almost these little pull tabs that you can pull out and get the side panels off. Basically, when you're building in it, access is really open. You have the entire case in front of you. The power supply is within the same compartment. And now one thing to keep note when you are building, um, it would be nice if you can get some custom cables or something like that for your small form factor power supply. It just might make your build a little bit neater because as the power supply is in the same compartment, you just have to be careful to route your cables and make sure everything's nice and neat and hidden. Because remember, being such a visual case, cable management is going to be be super important here. You also have more than enough room for most reasonably sized GPUs. Of course, I wouldn't recommend fitting an extremely large GPU in here, but I was able to do a water cool GPU. This was a Titan XP with, with an EK water block on it. Um, it was absolutely fine fit without any issues. You do get two slots on top with your PCIe slots. So if you happen to put in like an EVGA, um, 2060 ultra or something like that that has that's a two and a half or three slot gpu just keep in mind you won't be able to fit something like that that's air cooled you're going to need something two slot but most gpus are going to be two slot anyway so you should be fine especially if you're water cooling so overall this is a very surprising case in terms of water cooling just because generally you don't expect to do a full loop in a small case like this but it's surprisingly good and aesthetically when you have it on your desk and it's small enough to have it on your desk it's going to be smaller than a mid-tower computer. You can pack a lot of power in a case like this. Very good cooling performance for the size. And aesthetically, it's going to look pretty great. So I really, really enjoyed building in this case. All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to check out the other videos I did on various water cooling cases. And I'll see you guys on the next video.